Hello everyone, on today's episode, we're going to be learning about eager loading, which will help us reduce duplicate queries on our application. So on the previous episode, we installed this lovely looking debug bar, and we noticed that we had 17 database statements, which is a lot, and 10 of them were duplicated, probably more than 10. We could reduce it even more than that. And if you look at it, one of the issues we have is we are using the loading the user number two multiple times, even though we technically only need to load it one time. Uh, we are making a single query every time we're loading all the comments, right? Comments for ID number nine, eight, seven. We could actually make a single query to load all of them, which will be very a lot more efficient. We are doing the exact same user ID mistake again. So eager loading is a way to load all the relationships for a model upfront in a single request. So let's take a look at it. Now, by default, what we are doing is called lazy loading, where Laravel takes or makes a database request whenever you access a relationship, right? So it's kind of loaded as you need it, right? But it happens to be a little bit inefficient. So in order to do lazy loading, I'm going to open up our dashboard controller. And basically, wherever you're loading your models, right? In this case, I'm doing it here. You can go ahead and call a method called wit, which is available on all eloquent models in Laravel. And you can pass it in the relationship you want to eager load, right? Or load upfront in a single request. And this accepts you can pass in a single array, a single string, or you can pass in an array of strings. And this will accept one of the relationships defined on your model. So in this case, on my model, I have two relationships, comments and user. So I'm going to go ahead and eager load user. So you can just go ahead and pass in user, save it. And if we take a look before I reload, uh, we are loading, we are making 17 statements. So I'm going to do a quick reload. And we are now down to 13, right? And the reason this is happening, guys, is... I have five ideas per page on my application. So previously, every time we were loading this user coding flick, we were making a single request, right? So we have five ideas. We were making five requests for just the user. Now, instead of five, we're doing only one, right? So we reduced it by four. Now we have a similar issue for the comments. For the comments, every time we're loading the comments for the ideas, we are making a single separate request. Now, these comments are different, right? So it's not duplicated. However, we could actually make all of these in a single request, right? So let's go ahead and also add comments to this list. So it's also eager loads comments. I'm going to save it up. And again, if you pay attention, take a look at it here, guys. We're doing eight, nine. So we're making a single request for every, for the comments of a sing, every single idea. If I reload, first of all, we're down to nine statements from 13. But we are actually doing a single query to load all the comments, right? Very neat. So it's using the in and passing in the ID for all the ideas we have. So it's going to be a lot more efficient instead of doing like five or six. And again, this scales very well. So if you have like a lot of ideas on a single page, maybe 20 ideas. So this is going to scale well. Basically, the more comments you have, the better this is going to be, okay, in terms of performance. So very nice. Now, we still have another issue, which is we have this user ID number two duplicate again. And the reason this is happening is because of the users under our comment box. So we can also do eager loading here. Now, there is an easy way of doing it. You can actually do sub relationships. So here I can say comments dot user, and this will go ahead and eager load the user relationship on our comments as well. Now you do need to make sure you have a user relationship defined on the comments model. So I'm gonna go ahead, open it up. I have that relationship defined. So if you need to make sure you define this, but using this dot notation, you can eager load the comments and the user's comments. So super cool. So let's do a reload again. I'm gonna reload the page, open up our queries, and we're down to five guys. So we went from 17 all the way down to five queries. And this is the lowest we can technically go. Again, this count is for our pagination. We are showing the number of total number of ideas we have. We can't really get rid of that. This one is for obviously loading all the ideas on the page. This one is loading, loading all the users for our ideas. Now, in this case, it seems like it's a duplicate because uh, all the users that have posted comments are exactly identical to the users that have posted comment ideas, right? So in a real application, these two lists are going to be completely different. Again, this is not a single user loaded. It's a list of users, right? But in this specific example, the lists are exactly identical, but in, in a real application, these two will be completely different queries. Okay. And then we obviously need to load the comments. So this is very nice. We have gone from 17 down to five, 
right? And you can play around with this on, you know, maybe you have made your own custom pages, things like that. See wherever you're making inefficient calls and then use eager loading to reduce it. Now, one more thing you can do with eager loading, guys, is you can also go ahead and define it on the model itself. So Laravel automatically does it for you. So for example, let's say on application, in our application it's also true, we are loading the user for the idea almost every single time. Like whenever we are displaying an idea, we're also displaying the username or the user who posted it. So we're always going to use this with user. So what you can do is kind of automate this instead of having to call it every single time and tell Laravel to automatically do it whenever you're loading ideas. And the way it is done is you can go ahead and open up your model and define a protected field of dollar sign width. And inside this width, as you can kind of guess what's gonna happen, right? So this is kind of the equivalent to what we had on the model itself when we were doing the width there. So we can go ahead and just pass in user over here and it's gonna be identical to our previous code, okay? These two are basically the exact same thing. And if I reload, we are going to have 13 queries. So I can go ahead and also load the comments. We should be down to nine. And then in order to load the user for those comments, I can say dot user. And we're basically down to five again, right? So very neat. However, you do need to be careful with this, guys. If you, for some reason, on some pages are not loading the user, a lot of it still is going to make the, you know, the query to load the users, okay? So it will load it all the time. It will load the users every single time, whatever you have inside this width. So it's, you need to be careful with that. So uh, if for some reason, let's say you have this width and on a single page or a few pages, you're not using this user relationship or the commerce user relationship, you can use a method called without and it's the opposite of it. And you can say, okay, for this single case, I don't want to use or load the user relationship, okay? So if I reload, now we are making nine statements. So it will basically disable eager loading on a, you know, a single use case if you would like it. So this is the opposite of with. Now, one more thing you can do guys as well with eager loading is you can define what columns you want to load. So for example, uh, for our users, we are not really using all the columns inside the user's table. If you look at the query, we are saying select, and I do need to reload the page. We are saying select everything from users. So you can actually define the columns you have, especially if you have a very big table with a lot of columns. You can technically reduce your memory uh, by basically defining only the columns you need. So in this case, I can go ahead and say, you need to do colon, double colon, and this will basically tell it, okay, load these columns. And I can say ID, and I believe you're loading the name. And make sure you don't have any space here, guys. You will get an error. So let's save it. Let's do a reload. And you can see the query updated from select ID and the name from users, right? Which is, again, very neat, and it will save on memory. Now, on a simple application like this, guys, the difference is basically... Uh, very small we won't be able to tell the difference but on you know large scale applications you might be able to reduce your memory usage using this but again depends on the application and i think we also need to load the image so what i can do is also add image here and i think that's all the columns we need we are not using any of the other columns so i'm just going to add it over here now we can do the exact same thing for the users as well here i can say uh, colon uh, for the comments and say id name and image Let's do a reload and we are doing the exact same thing for this guy over here as well. Now we could have gone ahead and defined this user on the comment uh, model as well, technically, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and define it on the idea itself because that's usually the use case. I'm not loading the comments alone. Usually it's done from uh, ideas. And that's basically it guys. We can define which columns you want to load. Okay. Again, very awesome. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. Go ahead and try this out. You can maybe go ahead and try it on your own applications. Install the debug bar. Now, as you get more experience, you kind of know when to use it and when not to use it. So you don't have to install the debug bar. But when starting out with Laravel, it's good to install it and play around and get used to what Laravel is doing under the background, okay? So you have a better idea. And again, sometimes maybe your application is slow. You can install the debug bar and kind of dig deeper on what kind of queries you're making under the hood and find out okay maybe i'm doing things a little bit inefficiently in this area and you know optimize it and that's it guys so 
as always appreciate it if you smash that like button and subscribe so you get notified of the latest episodes it's a good way of supporting the channel and helping me grow and i see you guys on the next episode have a great day bye